In Pit Lane, proudly brought to you by Rally Drive, where you get to experience the thrill of driving a championship winning rally car. Cars rolling around on the warm-up lap for the final round of the Tasman Revival Series for Formula 5000s here at the Phillip Island Historic Meeting for 2007 and leading them down the Gardner Strait, weaving back and forth, trying to get plenty of heat into those huge tyres. It's Ian Clements in the Lola T332. Alongside of him will be Peter Dunn from the UK in the March 73A. Then comes Andrew Robson's Lola T332. Another visitor from the UK, Frank Lyons in a Lola T330. Then comes Tony Rich from New Zealand in a T332. Then comes Shane Windleburn, also from New Zealand, in the only T400 in the race. Just behind him comes Stan Redman in another T332. Then comes Aaron Burnson in the Talon, and we'll see that in just a moment. The red car, a car that we haven't seen much of in Australia, and you'll see it just coming into view in just a moment. Behind the uh, Black March there, that's Aaron Lewis's car, and that's the car of Graham Smith, another one of the marches, a March 732A. Lindsay O'Donnell in a big FM5 is next. Then we've got Darcy Russell, Kerry Anderson, Bob Harbour, Russell Greer, Bill Hemming in the Elfin, Paul Christie in a Lola, the McRae of Peter Burson. Then comes Judy Lyons in the Eagle, a car we haven't seen here in Australia before. And at the rear of the grid, after some problems in the previous race, it's David Abbott in the Lola T430. And there you can see that massive field lined up behind the Porsche Cayman safety car, heading up over Lukey Heights and getting ready for the spectacular rolling start here at Phillip Island 2007, the biggest field of Formula 5000 seen in this country for many, many years. Down they'll go into MG Corner, and in just a moment, the Porsche Cayman will just pull off. And here they come, past the safety car. Ian Clements on pole position, then comes Peter Dunn. You can see the car of, uh, of Frank Lyons in there, the red and white car without the airbox. Some of the cars have lost the airbox over the weekend for one reason or another. But as we can see them come down, they take the green flag and they're away. And as they head down to Doon Corner for the first time, it looks like it's the uh, pole sitter, Ian Clements, who's got the start. As they come through Doon Corner, it's Clements from Dunn. Then in third place, it's Lyons who's moved into third place ahead of Robson, the local, as the field files through Doon Corner and into Southern Loop for the first time. Out of the loop, and it's still Clements. He's in front of Dunn at the moment. So you've got the New Zealander from the Englishman. Back in third place, Frank Lyons, another one of the English visitors, ahead of the first of the locals, and that's Andrew Robson. Through Honda Corner they go and head up towards Siberia. Now Robson has moved past Lyons into third place, so we've got Clements in the lead now. There you can see Dunn's car, Robson. And we can see Aaron Lewis has made a good start there in the Maddish A50. Bob Harbour back there a little bit as well. Some of the older cars, David Abbott, you can see there, going through. So David Abbott coming from the rear of the grid, he'll be one to watch. Clement still in front, however. Dunn is right behind, though, as they go around the hay shed and up to Lukey Heights for the first time. A wide line there, very unusual line there from Dunn. But as they head down into MG Corner for the first time, it's Clement still in the lead. Five litres of stock block Chev, fuel injected, putting out over 500 horsepower. And you've got Clements coming onto the main straight once again, a very quick part of the circuit. Then you can see Robson. There's Line going around there. Frank Line has a huge collection of classic single seaters, not just Formula 5000s, but Formula One cars as well. You might remember a few years ago we went to Dijon for the historic meeting there, where we caught up with Frank. He was driving the Hesketh on that occasion, and the, his wife Judy, who's running the Eagle here, was running in the uh, in a Surtees a Formula One car, but these are Formula 5000s, as I said, five litre, stock block Chevy engines. 
very fast, light, very unpredictable, and the biggest field of these we've seen in a long, long time. And you can see Dunn is now closing right up on Clements as they go through the uh, through the Honda corner. Dunn throws it sideways, loses a little bit of ground to Clements, but he's right on the back of Clements now. So this is a great performance by Dunn in the march. And it's a car we didn't see a lot of here in Australia. And one thing with the march is they all seem to have different uh, different configurations, different bodywork. Of course, probably the most famous we saw in the country was the ex jo was uh, John Cannon's car, which won a round of the uh, Stuyvesant Series at uh, Sandown, falling to pieces, and it had the Formula One style bodywork on it with the big shovel nose and the side radiators, but this is another modification, and it's going very quickly in the hands of our visitor, Peter Dunn, from the UK. Lots of international guests here for the weekend here at the Phillip Island Historic, now widely regarded as one of the best historic meetings in the world. I think we had about 25, 30 cars from, um, from overseas, quite possibly more for this year. Usually held the week before the Australian Formula One Grand Prix at Albert Park. So if you're overseas, you've got an historic car and you would like to make a, a big week of it, it's worth getting here early, a week before the Grand Prix, head down to Phillip Island and uh, have an absolute great weekend. It's one of the great weekends of, uh, of international motorsport, that's for sure. Three Formula 5000s in a row, Lola, March, and then another Lola. That's Andrew Robson, the first of the local drivers. Andrew, of course, was the only man who's been able to beat Clements in the uh, in local condition so far. Had a win at Sandown before having some problems. Certainly the fastest of the locals. Unfortunately, not a huge turnout of the Australians. The New Zealand is certainly carrying the flag for Formula 5000 racing right around the world. And there you can see the car. Oh, that's Shane Windleburn up front. He's gone off in the T400. Shane Windleburn in that T400, that's the ex uh, Durex car, formerly sponsored by uh, Durex Condoms, created a massive storm in the UK. And there's, uh, there's Darcy Russell, who we normally see behind the wheel of the big Dodge Viper in sports car racing here in Australia. Darcy back behind the wheel of his T330. That's the big FM5 there of Lindsay O'Donnell, a car very famous in New Zealand. We didn't see a lot of it here in Australia, so it's great to catch up with that. And car number 23 going round, that's uh, Tony Richards in his Lola T332. Immaculately turned out car. Back with our leader going down into Dewan Corner. It's Clements once again. Peter Dunn is still on his tail, however. They seem to have shaken uh, put, uh, Robson just a little bit. And he, in turn, has uh, managed to get out a break on the car of, uh, of Frank Lyons. Once again, done very good under brakes here as they go into Honda Corner. He gets right up on the tail now, and that's a better line by Dunn. And he's closed right up on Clements once again, so this race certainly isn't over. Clements is still in front, but Dunn is right behind now and doing a great job. They head out of Siberia and down towards the hay shed. And there's the car of Judy Lyons. That's the Eagle, a car that we, uh, car that we really haven't seen much of in Australia. So interesting to see that. And here's the battle between Darcy Russell and he's being caught now by David Abbott in the Lola T430. That's the ex-Alfredo Costanzo Warwick Brown car. And behind him is car number eight. That's one of the earlier model Lolas, the T142 of uh, Kerry Anderson. So we've got cars from the late 60s right through to the, uh, to the late 70s. And there's the talon there of Aaron Burson and he's dicing with Smith in the march as they go down the Gardner straight once again. The Talon, as we said before, based on the uh, basic design of the McRae GM2, and a car that was driven by Chris Amon, the uh, former Formula One star from New Zealand, the ex-works Ferrari driver, probably the last car that Chris drove in, uh, in any sort of anger. That's an ex-Chaparral Lola there for uh, Robson. But you can see the car in front, it's Ian Clements. And right behind him, the orange machine of Dunn. 
And oh, it looks like we've had a lose there for Graham Smith. So Graham Smith has uh, had a bit of a, a lose at Honda in the March. So unfortunately, that's going to put him out of contention for that uh, that particular battle with the car of uh, of Burson in the Talon. But they sweep around the very fast, long sweeper, a very tricky, long corner, fabulous circuit for open wheelers here at Phillip Island. There's the Talon. Going around now and seems to be just cruising at the moment. And there's, oh, that's the car of, uh, that's Lion. Putting two wheels onto the dirt very quickly and that was, uh, that was a bit scary for all concerned. Once again, they're coming round the sweeper. Heading down towards the uh, Honda corner again, going past the Eagle there is our leader. Clements and he goes past the uh, the car there which is uh, Peter Burson in the McRae GM1. You can hear the wind blowing a gale here at Phillip Island. Once again we have lots of problems and we must apologise yet again we've had problems getting our cameras out to our regular locations where we would like to be. We've been forced to uh, do a lot of this filming from the spectator area due to the uh, due to restrictions placed on us by the clerk, of course, at this particular meeting. So we do apologise that we can't get uh, some better shots and it's made for a fairly, uh, a fairly choppy uh, sort, of, uh, sort of coverage, but our apology. But look, it's fabulous to see these cars in action. I'm sure you'll agree. And coming up later in 2008, we will see the uh, 40th anniversary of Formula 5000s. And that's happening in the United States at the famous Watkins Glen circuit. And a lot of these cars will be in action. And boy, wouldn't it be sensational to be there. And under the bridge once again, and heading down towards the chequered flag, it's Ian Clements from New Zealand. He held, holds out the car of Peter Dunn in the march. Third place will be Andrew Robson. Frank Lyons will be next despite that half lose. Then comes Aaron Burson. Graham Smith will hold on to be sixth. But after the race, we had the opportunity of catching up with our winner from New Zealand. He is Ian Clements. Ian, congratulations. A big weekend here at Phillip Island and also a big year. A winner once again of the Tasman Revival Series. How's the weekend gone? Oh, it's gone very well. Thanks, Fred. Yeah, after uh, our little issue on Saturday with the start, we've sort of uh, got past that and... Um, Today's been a great day. It's been, uh, you know, just uh, a stunning success, really, from my point of view, obviously. And um, to be quite honest, a bit of a surprise because uh, it's the first time I've been here, and uh, and it's an awesome track. Just thoroughly enjoyed it, but of course, it uh, takes a while to get used to it. So uh, I'm very pleased that it all sort of worked out in the end. So, so tell us about what happened yesterday at the start. Um, there was a little bit of confusion in the sense that uh, Andrew Robson and myself had a certain expectation that didn't actually work uh, out in that sense and uh, obviously uh, uh, because of that confusion um, some people uh, believed there was a start and some people didn't, uh, myself included and the reality of the situation was that uh, um, I never sort of basically got up to race speed uh, you know, at the right moment but uh, anyway. It was one of those things, and we put it behind us, and uh, today worked a treat. So, as you say, your first time here at Phillip Island as a venue for Formula 5000, I don't think you'll probably get much better. Uh, do you think that we'll see these cars back in force again next year? Well, I certainly hope so. We've just absolutely thoroughly enjoyed it. We've always been wanting to come here. We'd heard about the circuit, how great it was, and uh, such a great driver's circuit, and it's proved to be everything uh, that had been promised in that sense. So, uh, you know, once again, we're very grateful to the VHRR and uh, the Victorian Mini Club for inviting us because, you know, it's been a special weekend. Thoroughly enjoyed it. In Pit Lane, proudly brought to you by Rally Drive, where you get to experience the thrill of driving a championship-winning rally car.